this evening. You was hitting on a lot of what I'm going to kind of talk about tonight that's going on in, in the world and in the church. And it's very disturbing. It, re it really is. I mean, we're, we're in that day where, I mean, just evil and reckless. I mean, just people are just reckless with things. And <clears throat> I do have a light of good news. I was watching the news right before we came. And United Methodist Church, I don't know if y'all heard about this, but they've been having some churches are, are starting to disassociate with the United Methodists because of, the, of their views on homosexuality. Well, praise God, a hundred of them in South Carolina is disassociating with them and going out on their own. And I'm thankful for that. I thank God for that because as a church, we need to stand up and say, and I like what one pastor said, look, we love them. We don't hate them. You know, we want them to come to church, but the Bible teaches that the marriage is between one man and one woman. And that's what we teach in the Bible, and that's what we go by. As well as this church does the same. If those are online, that's what we believe here. Marriage between one woman and one man. <coughs> and, and according to the word, so. So the last time we met, I talked about the fruits of the Spirit. And talked about where... Jesus, when Jesus comes back, what he's looking for, okay? He's looking for the fruits of the Spirit as far as a Christian, what we're supposed to operate in. But what I want to talk about tonight, I think will be good, but it may be uh, rough to, to a sense of if you're operating in these things, it, it, it's, it's not to, this message is not to bring a, a condemnation. Christ don't do that. Christ brings salvation. And what we're wanting to do is I want to just show you what the Word of God says. I want to talk about the works of the flesh and, and, and uh, <clears throat> what God says about it. And it may sound like it's condemnation, but it's not. God wants to convict or convince you that to walk in His path and His ways and His his statues. So as a Christian, we're supposed to study his word. Yes, we have issues. Everybody in this room has got something they're working on. Everybody that's hearing me online has something they're working on. And if you don't, you come on up here, we'll pray for you because you're lying. We got you got a lying spirit. <laughs> Everybody, including one standing up here speaking, is working on something. So when I'm talking about tonight, I'm not talking about it in the terms of you gotta be perfect or have perfection. Because we're striving for perfection. We're striving to make that mark. But I, can I just be honest with you? If Jesus were to come back tonight, are you confident? First of all, are you going? But I'm more or less, are we confident that the church is going? When I'm talking about the church, I mean the body. I'm not talking about specifically this church. I'm talking about the whole body in itself. There's things in the church that God showed me that he's not pleased with. And I'm hearing testimonies all over the place with people that's had encounters with Jesus Christ himself. And I keep hearing it over and over again. Go back to the old past. Go back to the old past. Go back to the ways of holiness. Read my word. Study my word. Seek my face. Get away from vain conversation. Get away from pride. Get away from all the things, you know, I'm not against prosperity, but the prosperity message has overshadowed the relationship message. This is what it's boiled down to. And I asked God one time, because a little while back, I, me and BR has talked a little bit about it, that we want to see revival. BR has that heart as well as I, Rhonda, Thelma, I mean, the Pat, uh, Jeanette and Ricky as well, and Becky has that desire to see revival in the church. I want to see the Catherine Kuhlman days myself. I want to see the Benny Hinn days, the Ken, uh, Kenneth Hagen and A.A. A. Allen. I don't know if you, you some, some of y'all know who, I'm sure you know who that is. Some people don't. But you can go look these guys up on YouTube. It's very good teaching. Kenneth Hagen actually had a experience of hell when he was a young boy. You know, he was dying on his deathbed and actually went into hell three times. And you can hear his testimony about that. But it ain't this, this their name. I don't want you to get focused on the name of the person because it's not about that. Okay, it's about 
What, where do they position themselves to receive that anointing? Now, God has an anointing he places on your life, and he has a gift. But it wasn't, God said you're putting too much, because I was kind of focused on it, okay? He said you're putting too much emphasis on the actual man, you didn't even know it. It's not that the man has the anointing. What you were seeing was the corporate anointing, and that's falling away. Well, I said, well, God, why is it, how is it falling away? He said, well, he started taking me in, in the Word. So I'm going to show you uh, one, one scripture. I'm going to go to Matthew uh, 7. Uh, 20, verse 21, and I'm going to, let's see if it's, he said a clicker work. There we go. Actually, I'm sorry, Ron. It's seven twenty-one. I must have wrote it down wrong. That's my fault. I'll read it to you. It says Matthew seven verse twenty-one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, what's his will? His word. So we're walking in his word. That's what, this is what he said. This is, it's in red, by the way. That means Jesus is talking. Many will say to me in that day. Well, now, what's that day? That day is a great judgment. These are going to be the people that stand before the white throne judgment that are not saved or didn't receive Jesus as their Savior. Lord, have we, uh, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name in thy name have we not cast out devils. In thy name have we not done many wonderful works. Now for those who believe in once saved, always saved, that right there just debunked it. Here's how what I mean. In order to cast out devils and prophesy in his name, you must be a believer. You cannot do it as an unbeliever. Am I right? I got Brother Ricky will check me and Jeanette check me and <laughs> make sure I, I believe I know I'm right on that. And they, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew who you are because you was a worker of iniquity. You catch that last phrase. I didn't know who you was because you were. What's iniquity? That's sin. It's deep sin. Actually, Jeanette brought to my attention we was talking about the other night she said that's what you call deep sin that's not okay now let, let me back up that's not to say that you had a bad day and sin you're going to hell you confess it this is talking about continual no repentance i just don't care i want to do what i want to do live how i want to live what does that sound like to y'all that sounds like where the church is now I come to church, throw my tithe right here, throw throw my hands up, throw a praise and worship, and then smile at the pastor, tell you everything's all right, smile at the uh, the brothers and sisters in the church, it's okay, we're all right. Lord is good, yes, he healed, he did this, that, or the other. And then go right out them doors and live like hell. That's what this is talking about. But it's also breaking down what you call a double life, two lives. Double life meaning two lives. You live a Christian one on this side and you live like hell on this side that's called lukewarm and you will be spewed out of his mouth you don't have a relationship with him I love how people say well you Christians you know y'all make it it's, it's too easy to be a Christian and all that I'd like to know who, who that is because it's one of the hardest walks I ever did in my life it's the greatest walk I've ever did in my life but it's a very hard walk because God all the time is wearing I don't know about y'all but wearing my tail out I don't like that. Do this. You need to cut this out. I don't like this. Because he does because we love he loves us, right? The moment I don't get that, we're in trouble. That's the way I look at it. The moment he don't talk to you about that, you're in trouble. Oh, this may be a two part message, by the way. Because there's a lot of information. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to pull out my old iPad here. Uh, unlock there, sir. There we go. Oh, put my little code in. I'm going to go to Galatians 5, uh, 16 through 26. 
The reason I had this Bible open, God actually gave me a scripture to start off with before the service. You had that happen, hadn't you, Brother Ricky? You know, he'll, he'll give you, throw you a couple extra scriptures on there and change your message a little bit. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, there we go. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. So when you're walking in the Word of God, you're not going to be doing the things of the flesh. That's what that's saying. 17, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so you cannot do the things that you would. That's talking about your spirit man, what you call the two dogs fighting in you. Uh, the right and wrong. Uh, what Roy used to say, I got two dogs fighting in me. Which one is winning the one I feed the most? So are you feeding your flesh the most or your spirit? Sanctification is simply defined to separate from but also unto at the same time. So you, you when you separate from the world, okay, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop doing whatever. That's, that's good. But if I'm not converted to the word of God, then I'm going to go right back into what I was doing. That's what that's what that's saying. Let's see what else we got here. And if you've been led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now here's where here's where we this is what God is saying he don't like. This is what this is Bible. I'm giving you Bible right here. It's not what I say. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness idolatry, witchcraft, we talked about witchcraft a minute ago, hatred, violence, variance, variance, elimination, wrath, strife, seductions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like which I told you before, as I told you in times past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What does that say? Shall not. That's pretty self-explanatory. So if you're operating in these, you're not going to inherit the kingdom. You're not going to be counted worthy to go into rapture. Or if you go down the road tonight and somebody sideswipes you and kills you, eternity is a long time. There is no time. Hell is a real place. We had to tell a family member. Rhonda had to tell a family member uh, a couple of weeks ago, they wanted to try out Jehovah Witness. She told them out of love, they don't believe in hell. Well, well they believe in hell on earth. No, the literal Bible, the Bible talks about hell's in the center of the earth. And I'm going to do a teaching on that one night, so I'm getting it ready. We're going, we're going, I'm going to do it right here. God done told me to do it. We're going to talk about hell. I'm going to go through the whole Bible, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk. I've, what I've already seen, it talks about the worms, it talks about the pits, it talks about the heat. You're getting burned up, you're getting eat on, you're getting tormented by demons. And it can, and think about this. In one million years from now, there'll still be day one in hell because there's no time. Go ask the rich man that's burning there now. He just wanted one drop of water just to relieve his tongue. One little drop. One drop wouldn't, one little drop of this wouldn't satisfy you and I but it was a person in hell that's how bad they're tormented they're thirsty but I won't get into all that but this is where this will lead you now some people say well I don't understand what some of that means well I'm going to break some of it down for you for those who don't know some of you know some of you don't but I'm talking about one this is for us and ones online so what is adultery Adultery is unlawful sexual relations between men and women, single or married. What it boils down to is sex was provided for the marriage and the marriage covenant only. Outside of that is illegal, no matter what it is, period. Okay, will somebody say, well, I'm, I'm married, can we bring another partner in? No. This goes on. Can I, can I just be honest what I'm talking about? I've heard Christians talking about, yes, fornication. 
same as adultery, but besides all matter of unlawful relations, just like what I just explained. Okay, bringing in partners, doing. Uh, there's this thing that was going around. It started years ago. I heard about it. That where you do what they call uh, swapping. So couples will get together and swap partners. Mm -hmm. That's that's how you watch wrong. Uncleanliness, whatever is opposite of purity, including sodomy, homosexuality. I'm the breaking down. What I'm doing is breaking down each one. Homosexuality, lesbianism. So if you're a homosexual or lesbian, it's unclean acting before God is wrong. This is the Bible. This ain't me. Bestiality, which has, and that goes on too. This is where the people get relations with animals. This goes on, believe it or not. It's nasty, but bless them, Lord. Say, well, they need to be saved. The devil has deceived these people and gotten trapped into these things. And all, my, all other forms of sexual perversion. Now, I, Ron and I have known some people or pastors that had taught, well, we want to spice the marriage up. So we're going to go get some items to help out. And I prayed about that thing. God said, no, you're inviting demons in your house. Don't do it. And we did. And you know what? The one that taught that almost lost their marriage. They don't teach it no more. They repented of it, from what I understand. But it was pastors, and they almost lost their marriage over it. Bringing in the world. You cannot mix the world in with God. God hates the world. God hates the system of the world. The system of the world is designed by Satan. You cannot bring, I can't emphasize that. I'm seeing, I hear more and more people bringing it in the church. They think it's all right. Just come in here and, and, well, you know, it's legalism. You're, you're too hard. Notice what the Bible says. You're going to be judged by this Bible, all of us, whether you lived it or not. It's that simple. And if you're not, <laughs> you know, for a Christian, you'll be at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? You'll be judged by what you did as a Christian. Whether your word, like when I'm preaching tonight, I'm being judged by this. That's why I stick with the word. I want to be right. I want to hear this word, well done, good and faithful servant, and whatever he's given me. And I don't want to be, well, I, I had an agenda. I, 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 no, keep me, no. I give God all the glory. And, but you got people that are getting in churches. They do it for careers. They do it, they don't do it as a calling. They're bringing in all this worldly stuff, and they, they, they and if you don't know the word, can I be honest? You'll fall for that mess because it sounds good and it feels good, but it is it's of the devil, it's demonic. When you was talking about Harry Potter, okay, my family, some of them, I shouldn't, I guess I shouldn't bring my family up, so, but it's just truth. You know, they they when that Harry Potter stuff came out. That stuff, I, they was into that. And I, the first time I seen it, I said, man, I ain't watching. That's garbage. I said, that's a wizard. Uh, they had it on their TV. I said, that's a wizard. I said, you know what? That's witchcraft. That's wrong. Oh, no, it's it's just a movie. It's just for the kids. I said, okay, believe that mess, but you don't, don't be surprised. You have nightmares. Guess what? Them kids, the point I understood, I think had some nightmares or something went on. You ever rebuke the devil and he didn't buke? Here's what I mean by that. You get in there and you get in some stuff. And then there's, you fill them in your house. Now, we, we pray. I'm, I'm just talking, okay? I, I've been, a, you know, when I was in the world, even in my early Christian walk, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And you rebuke them and they don't go away. And God had to teach me. He said, well, he can't go away. You gave him authority to be there. By inviting that mess in and doing that sin, you got to repent of your sin, wash in the blood, and then rebuke. Now I had to do it. Now y'all, y'all, y'all may be there. I'm not there yet. God's still working on me. Okay, I ain't saying I've done anything crazy. I'm just saying that I've had to learn through some experience over the years that you know you done. And I'm saying you done some innocently. I'm not saying you willfully went out and done something horrible, but you come out, you did something innocent, and then God will reveal it to you. Well, I don't like that. 
you don't need to watch that or you don't need to okay lord i said i enjoy watching it but it's wrong you're inviting that mess in you have then you have nightmares okay so be careful about what what you give your attention to and what you're inviting be aware of your surroundings spiritually Ask God to give you the revelation knowledge. I pray that every morning. Lord, let your revelation knowledge just flow freely. I want to see what's going on. I want to know. Uh, but as, a, as a child of God, you have that covenant with him. He protects you. He will open your eyes to see things that others wouldn't see spiritually. You know, because I'm around, look, at my job, I'm around a lot of different folks. I'm on, I'm on every, I see a lot of things. Every culture, every, every race, great people, not saying that. But they're not saved, a lot of them. And they're, you'll get on the dot, they'll get to cussing over here, and this one over here talking about this one, the bad stuff over here talking about that. And I have to disassociate. I literally have to clean my mind. Lord, I plead the blood over my mind because I don't want to hear that mess. i got to spend that time cleaning that junk out because they're the world. That's what they do. But what bothers me is Christians doing it. That's where God has a problem. So worldly people are going to do worldly things. And as a Christian, you should not be surprised because guess what? You used to be there as well, and God brought you out. The problem lies is when it's coming in the church, and then we act like it's all right. And you can't do that. That's like, you know, being in a marriage. You can't be married, and I want to go hang out with the fellas in the strip club. It don't work that way, amigo. You're going to be divorced. You asking for divorce court <laughs> or vice versa? I'm gonna hang out with the girls and I'm gonna just—I'm a free woman. I'm a—I'm a—I'm a, I'm a new woman and no man can tell me what to do. Well, no, you out of order because you ain't submitting to the leadership of the house. Not saying that you know as, as a as a what you call a dictator. I'm talking about as as the love of the Lord. And now he can't manage the marriage because you out here trying to be act like you single. You're not single. You're one. You're in a covenant. What what you do matters. What you do affects the other one. I see it all the time. Christian marriage is like, it's crazy. Lasciviousness is promoting or partaking of that which produces emotions, anything leading to foster sex, sin, and lust. Worldly pleasures that have been avoided by the Christian so that lasciviousness may not be committed. It should be avoided because lascivious is not what that means is not putting on the brakes so you can say well brother ricky i'm gonna go let's go out and have a beer and i used to drink you said it in the pool but i can say it. i used to drink too let's go out and have a beer at church one beer ain't gonna hurt you problem is lascivious is you'll start that one and the next thing you know is 10 it's not having control and then you got to can't put the brakes on because you done got so deep into the sin that you got to have a deliverance. And then we got to come up here and, and put oil on you and deliver that thing off of you because you cannot, listen to me very carefully, you cannot deliver yourself. Only God can. And God is not going to deliver you until you have a made up mind that you want to be delivered. Now we can pray it off of you for a moment, we've done it many times here. I see him come in. We'll pray that demon off of him. That demon has to leave by the authority of Jesus Christ that lives in us. But as soon as that jerk, as soon as that person goes that back out the door, seven times more come on them because they chose to not give it up. And that goes for sex. That goes for drugs, alcohol. It's all the same. It's addiction is addiction, and all of them lead you to hell, and all of them destroy your life. And what I'm, that's again, what I'm talking about, I'm seeing Christians do. I see Christians post stuff on Facebook like, oh boy, had a good time tonight, had the beer in their hand or, or, or liquor or whatever. And I've heard people say, unsaved people say, that's a Christian? Okay, I don't wear a Budweiser shirt in here, not to pick on Budweiser or anything, but any kind of shirt that has liquor on it. Why? I'm a Christian. I should act like one. There should be a difference when I walk in the door between me and the world. Okay? I'm not saying we're perfect. I mess up. Listen, I mess up. I messed up this week. I'm going to mess up again. You're going to mess up. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the actual living the lifestyle. When it, when people are at my work, they know, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, he, 
He knows the word. I had a, a girl, a lady come up to me. You pray for my daughter? I ain't even told her I was a Christian. I know you pray. You pray for my daughter? She's going through something. Absolutely. We'll pray right here. They should know. Okay, you should not be operating in this. These things I'm talking about, it's of the world. But Christians are getting into this, man. I mean, it's, it's crazy. You're going, they're going to clubs and, sh and dancing to the, you're talking about the heartbeat of the music. They're going in, in there and dancing in the world. Okay, if Jesus came back, you think he's going to look down and say, mm, can't do it. They don't know me. Because if you truly knew him, he would tell you not to go in the club. I won't go in there and witness. No, you're not. You're going to go in there and you're going to fall into sin. You show me in the Bible where he told you to go into something like that. He ain't told you to go in there. You wanted to go in there, but he didn't tell you to go in there. And what I'm telling you, I've had that argument. <laughs> well, God, I'm just going to hang out with the buddies. You know, they can go do No, you're in the wrong environment. And when you get in that environment, them demons have the right to get on you and torment you. I don't go to clothes. I go to church. I go where the Holy Spirit is. So the Holy Spirit has the authority. I give him the authority. I want him to reign and rule over me. I want him to guide me. He is our God. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit to guide you. Okay? He's going to guide. The Bible says he's going to guide you into all truth. So he's going to say, take this path. Go down here. Walk straight back. Oh, don't go there. That's bad. That's of the devil. But do we listen? No. Oh, that feels good. I'm going to go over Okay, and see the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's going to honor your free will choice, and he's going to let you go. He's going to beat you up. He's going to let you get spanked a little because he don't have to spank you. The, the sin and the, the consequences of it will spank you enough, and then you hopefully you'll come back. But I'm, I'm just I'm saying this tonight. Like, we're not condemning. It's just that we need to walk in the, the love of the Lord because he's truly listen. He's overdue. I'm 48 years old. I, can, I was thinking about it this week. I'll never forget. My grandparents were around my age when I was little, somewhere around there, 48, 50. And he used to talk about the good old days. I said, well, Grandpa, what do you mean by the good old days? I never understood that. Cause I said, I'm enjoying the day. I mean, we're talking about the good old days. I mean, he, saw, he said, son, I'm talking about the times were different. And I, as I've gotten older, I understand what he's talking about. I was thinking about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. You didn't see. Y'all, you flipped the TV on. There's nothing left of the imagination. And I'm sorry. Every time I turn around, I see this gay st or homosexual stuff. i got to be careful how I say that. <laughs> Lord, help me. Because <laughs> I, I have a problem with it. When I was growing up, if you, you want to get in a fight with somebody, you went up and said, you ain't, you, you old homosexual. You start fighting because that was a, that was a dirty word. Now it's like, oh, you, oh, you come out of the closet. Oh, come on in here. In the schools. Really? You flip the TV on. Like, every time I turn, it's homosexual stuff. Or it's, oh, uh, they talking about new movies that's coming out. There, there was one movie that's coming out. It's very sexually provocative, they said. And it's a hit. I just seen it ever. I was flipping through. I said, oh, what is going on? God, I remember God revealed to me. He said, sin is going to become legalized before he comes back. Well, guess what, folks? We are there. They're, going to, they're trying to shut the church up. That, well, we can't preach against this. It's not we hate them. They call it hate. We don't hate you. We're trying to love you enough to tell you that it's wrong to keep you out of hell. Hell's for it ever and ever and ever you ain't never coming out if you go there but you you want to skate along i mean christians want to skate if people want to skate along and say well hey, well I can, I can repent on my deathbed you might not make it okay an airplane went down just a couple of days ago in the woods killed every one of them i don't know if you heard about that on the news one in private jet so god that uh, they, they sent the Air Force out. It caused a sonic boom in Washington. And I remember hearing the reports that the, the Air Force pilot saw the pilot of that uh, private jet slumped over. I passed out. So if you know anything about flying, if you don't have to get too high, or if they don't have enough oxygen in the cab, you can pass out. That's how some crashes happen. That's what happened here. 
They're dead. Were they saved? They didn't plan on dying. Most people do not plan on dying. Accident, when you had car accidents, all that, we, you don't know. And then, are they in heaven or hell? Wherever they are, it's, it's forever. There's no coming out, no purgatory. Ain't none of that mess. Either they had the blood of Jesus Christ and it was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, or they're in the book, what they call I've heard them talk about the Book of Hell. They're, they're written in hell. They're, that's it. They're done. They're judgment. The judgment set as soon as you die. Appointed once for man to die, then judgment. That's what the Bible says. But as soon as you die, you're judged. Either you had to, you washed in the blood or you wasn't. And if you wasn't, there's a chamber down there waiting on you in hell. Or whatever the sins you did the most, that's where they put you. I'm just going by the Holy Spirit right now. So somebody need to hear it. I think it's more or less online. Idolatry. This country is well known for that. What is idolatry? Im image worship. Idolatry includes anything on which affections are passionately set with the admire, uh, admiration of the heart or admired with their heart. They put it above God and they just... That could be a person, thing. Idol worship is not, I mean, people pretty much know what that is. They do it. I want to go see this person in concert. They're my idol. I'm not saying you go see the person in concert is bad, but if that goes on. Witchcraft. Now, you was talking about that earlier. So what is witchcraft? It's sorcery, practicing, practice of dealing with evil spirits, magic, Casting spells, charms upon by which means of drugs, potions, enchantments, inflicting evil, pain, hatred, suffering, death, or to bring good, or to bring good, health, love, or blessings. Fake. That's what witchcraft is. Ouija boards, Dungeons and Dragons, Harry Potter. Those are your, your movies and games. Terror cards, terror readings. You know, you go to one and people read your palm, all that kind of stuff. That's what witchcraft is, casting spells. You know, I, um, I heard one guy, he used to be an ex-Satanist, he talked about how he would go, and I want you to listen to this one. He would go to weak churches that did not understand the power of God and the blood of Jesus Christ and cast spells on them Christians and a lot of times kill them. Wow, I, I got to think, I'll, I'll get you, I'm going to give you that, send that to you. But he, I mean, he's on fire now. He was, I mean, he was deep into uh, Satan worship. Satan had possessed him when he was a teenager. He didn't have a father figure, and Satan said, "I'll be your father." And you ought to hear his testimony. It's, it's just wild. But he would go cast spells because Christians didn't know who they were. He said it was mainly the ones who played with God. He said that was in double lives, double lives. Think about it. A witch coming into church, acting like a Christian, casting spells. Now you know we've had them here too, but they didn't last here because everyone, everyone here is on fire for God. You know, it didn't last. We love them, don't hate them. We we pray for them. That stuff don't bother me because the thing is, that's where they they in the right house. You in an anointed house of God, the spirits either anointing draws you or drives you. Either you're gonna come and submit under the power of God, or the power of God's gonna drive you out of here. That's just that simple. Man, it's 8.10 already. How long have I been preaching? I've been preaching 40 minutes. I ain't even got going good. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to, uh, can I read one more and then we'll go. You got time for one more? Let's talk about raft. Turbulent passions. Domestic, civil, turmoil, rage, and determined and lasting anger. So what causes that? Not let stuff go. And I, listen, we battle with it in our minds, ladies and gentlemen. People offend you, and you just have that wrath. What causes wrath is anger not dealt with, not forgiven. You got to immediately, even though I know it hurts. Listen, I, I'm... Everything I'm telling you, I've experienced. Uh, we've all been hurt in many ways. But letting that thing go gives God the permission to be in your life 
And trust me, God will deal with that person. You know what done it for me? It made me, this made me think. I'm like, I, I had no excuse after I heard this. There is no excuse. Mary Kay Baxter, now she's with the Lord now, but she did a book on heaven and hell. She had an experience. You know, God took her into hell. She wrote a book about it, and she went into heaven. But this thing stuck out to me. You can pull it up on YouTube, by the way, and listen to her testimony. I'd encourage you to do it. Uh, it'll change your life. She was talking about there was a part in heaven where there was aborted babies. There was a section where the angel, when a baby was aborted, the, the angel took her and showed her the process of how all that works, that God will complete them. They take them out of the womb and he'll complete them. And then they, they, they grow in heaven. The angels teach them or the redeemed, which is like us. They'll teach them about God. See, what you don't learn here, you learn in heaven. So... But the little babies were crawling. They was grabbing something in the water. The little letters, she says, like little sponge letters, or, or and the fishes would play with them. And they grabbed the, went to the what they call the forgiveness tree. And they grabbed that little leaf off it or something, and they went and laid it before God. This will blow your mind. Little babies say, "We forgive those who murder us. Will you forgive them?" Now. That don't blow your mind. I don't know what will. I'm like, I have no excuse. I forgive everybody for every wrongdoing. Even if they do something to me now, I forgive them immediately. I don't mean, you know, the hurt will, God will heal the hurt. But I, after that, but I, uh, you don't want unforgiveness to weigh you down and block your blessing or block your walk with God. It'll do it in a heartbeat. But unforgiveness, if you don't deal with it, turns into bitterness, which turns into wrath. They was, she was talking about one person in hell. Oh, she was an evangelist. I want you to listen to this. I'll tell you this and I'll, I'm closing. She was an evangelist. On fire for God, preached for 30 years. 30 years, Ricky. And her husband fooled around on her. And she said, well, God, I've been serving you all these years. Why is my husband fooling around? He said, I know, but you got to forgive him. I don't forgive him. She went, she, and, and Jesus told her, the, she got to the point where the devil entered into her, and she killed her, her husband, I mean, maybe back up, her husband went and asked for forgiveness from her. He realized he'd done wrong. He went before the church and asked them to forgive him. She wouldn't. So it got to her, it turned into wrath. She got a pistol, shot him, and I, I shot him. And, no, he didn't shoot her. She shot, shot him and then shot herself. She's in hell. She's in hell having a fake Bible trying to preach, hoping to get out. There's no way out. She wouldn't forgive him. Do you see how that thing's serious? This woman was on her way to heaven, building up rewards, infecting the kingdom. And because of one incident, didn't let them get that thing under control. Now she's in hell. And that's according to the testimony. I believe it. Now some people, I don't believe it. Well, you believe what you, that's okay. I believe it. It's real. So we'll finish up. I'll, I'll, I'll touch this another time. I kind of figured this was going to be a two-part because there's a lot of information. Hopefully you got something tonight. I oh. guess I'll pray. You want me to dismiss or you, are you? Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and we just ask you, Lord, just to be with everyone tonight, Lord. Let your word not go void, Lord. We bind the enemy from stealing the word in the name of Jesus. Uh, co cover everybody, Lord, as they go home tonight, Lord. Everybody be safe. Let everybody have a good week, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. See you all Sunday morning. Right, yeah. <laughs>